Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to the second day of two weeks of Thomas Hardy. Today I'm going to be talking about my 13th favourite or my second to least favourite Thomas Hardy novel, Aladician, which I probably said wrong. Chapter 1. The sun blazed down and down, till it was within half an hour of its setting, but the sketcher still lingered at his occupation of measuring and copying the chevron doorway, a bold and quaint example of a traditionalist style of architecture which formed the tower entrance to an English village church. So a Ladician, which I'm going to pronounce throughout this video in a variety of ways, all of which will be wrong, is a Thomas Hardy novel published in 1888. It is considered one of his novels of ingenuity, by which I don't mean that it's considered a novel of genius, but that it's considered one of his more plot-driven novels, and it is a very, very plot-driven book. There are three of these novels by Thomas Hardy which come under that category, and they are a Lodician, or a Lysodian, what do I call it? Also Desperate Remedies, and also The Hand of Ethelberta. Both of the other two I'll be talking about later on in this fortnight, but today to talk about a Lodician. So, to briefly explain what this book is about, for the bulk of the book we follow a character called George Somerset. He is a young architect who is just setting up his own practice and coming into his own when he encounters a woman called Paula Power. Now Paula Power is a young woman who has just inherited this massive old castle from her industrialist father. So her father has been massively important in the steam train industry and he purchased with his money made in the industrial revolution this massive very very old aristocratic castle which of course he is not part of he is not aristocratic nor is his daughter Paula who inherits it after his death so we already have this very interesting juxtaposition of old money versus new this juxtaposition is made all the more interesting by the fact that Paula's best friend is Charlotte de Stancy, who whose ancestors used to reside in this castle, but now, despite being aristocratic, they're really fallen on very hard times and don't have very much money. So Charlotte, this impoverished gentlewoman, watches her industrialist best friend live in the house of her ancestors, which is a very, very interesting dynamic. George Somerset, the architect, comes into their lives at this point and is immediately completely smitten with Paula. He manages to find a way into her life, at first through drawing various bits of the castle which she has recently inherited, and then eventually by becoming an architect, doing some redesign work to this castle. And his role as an architect is very, very interesting because where we already have in Paula and Charlotte, new money versus old money, and industrialism versus aristocracy, we have in George Somerset the embodiment of another force, the embodiment of the kind of professional man. But at the same time, he's doing architectural work to the Distancy castle where Paula Power now lives, some of which is kind of modernization, but other bits Paula wants inspired by sort of classical architecture. So there's all of these many, many things mingling together, which is something that I really do like about Elisodian. But that is only really the basic setup for the book because a lot of other stuff goes on. We have the character of Captain de Stancy, Charlotte's brother, who comes into the book, and we also have this very mysterious character of a young man called Dare, who is George Somerset's assistant for parts of the beginning of the book, and then everything embarks into a very deep, dark, mysterious plot. It involves many things which you would not expect to find in a Hardy novel, including faked photographs and fraudulent telegrams and various other mysterious dramatic ongoings. To talk about the things that I do like about Lonesodian, as I've already spoken about, I find the juxtaposition of old and new in this book really, really interesting. And I love the way that Hardy writes about these old and new families and the juxtapositions between them. I love the idea of this industrialist daughter occupying this very old aristocratic home, but also trying to update it and do new things to it and kind of combine the old and the new. I love that aspect of the book and I think it's really good. I also love the character of Dare. I think Dare is a wonderful, wonderful character. I feel like he could be better. There are bits where Dare's motivation and his emotional drive aren't completely explored as well as I think they could be, but I still find him a really, really interesting character, and I think his role in the plot is very, very good. I would also say that it's a very exciting and dramatic book, especially towards the middle and latter half of the book. There is a lot of drama. This is one of the few books ever where I genuinely miss my tube stop because I was reading it and forgot to get off when I was supposed to. I also like the way that Hardy writes about George Somerset's role as an architect. Architecture is a profession that you don't hear that much about in Victorian literature, with the exception of Hardy novels. I'm going to be talking about a lot of architects over the next fortnight, but I find it a really, really interesting profession and I love hearing about actual work going on in the Victorian period. I feel like in a lot of Victorian novels I get to see quite a lot of people's lives outside of their work but not actually that much of people's actual working life and so it's really really great to learn quite a lot about George Somerset and how he works as an architect. So in that sense there are quite a lot of things that I do like about the book and I do think it's a really interesting one to read. Moving on to things I like a little bit less, I find the character of Paula 
not exactly it's not that I don't like her but I find her a bit underdeveloped I feel like she could be a much better character than she is because there are moments of real interest for example the way that she feels about her place within this aristocratic home and the way that she is kind of torn between the old and the new in terms of what she likes I think that's really powerful and really interesting but there are other things about her and her motivation that I don't ever really understand her relationship with George Somerset is quite interesting but there are places where I really feel like we could do with a closer look inside her head I also find the dramatic plot while exciting and engaging, at times a little bit silly, it's just not nearly as good and as well paced and as well plotted and well thought out as the other dramatic plot driven novels. It's just nowhere near as well thought out as The Hand of Ethelberta or as Desperate Remedies, both of which I think are far superior to Lysodian in terms of their plot. And while there are really interesting aspects of the plot and the kind of mysteries going on here, and while, as I said, Dare, who is the drive for quite a lot of the dramatic action, is a very interesting character, I do feel that it's just not quite well done enough and there are times where you just can't really credit it, it just doesn't really feel very believable. I also find the very end of the book a little bit odd. There are ways in which I like the ending, or at least I feel like I like what happened in the ending. I think it's quite clever, the final thing that happens in like the last chapter, but the ending feels a little bit abrupt and like he just needed to write a little bit more and explore the impact of his ending a little bit more to make it as powerful as it could have been. I think the thing I struggle with about this book, aside from pronouncing its name, is that it could have been so much better. There are seeds in it of a really brilliant, really, really interesting story, but it gets lost a little bit in a way that it doesn't in other Hardy novels. There are other Hardy novels I'll talk about that I think are really, really perfect, and whereas I think the thing about this one is that it has a very interesting premise and it has some interesting characters and some really interesting themes, but it just doesn't quite fit well enough together for me. So it is an interesting one and again I think if you've read lots of other Hardy books it is worth a read but don't start here, it's not the best. That is basically all I wanted to say about Ladician. Please let me know if you have read this one and what you thought of it and I'll be back tomorrow talking about another Hardy novel.